So hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, let's get this straight. I'm not into triathlons, but the cycling part of this event is really, really interesting. So this is the Sub 7, Sub 8 challenge and it's basically a challenge to do the fastest Ironman triathlon in the world. So the guys have to go Sub 7 for the whole event and the girls have to go Sub 8 hours for the whole event and that's rapid. If you've ever done any triathlon or Ironman, you'll know that that's insane. But the cycling aspect of this is really interesting because basically, it's a 180 kilometer, eight man team time trial to pull that Ironman triathlete as fast as they can through the bike leg. Now, I'm gonna go into the kind of tech side of it after the event because I'm actually gonna get Dan Bigham back on the channel, friend of the channel, um, to talk about the strategy optimization and all the bike tech that goes into Joe Skipper side, um, his team. So Joe Skipper is the GB triathlete up against Christian Blumenfeld, who is the, the brand new Ironman world champ now i believe you know there's huge differences in those bike teams actually and essentially they're all domestiques for the ironman so they pull the ironman as fast as they can through the course so they're pretty fresh to then do the the marathon at the end now it's still a really tough event for the ironman of course they're getting shelter um, being triathletes they're probably not going to be or long distance triathletes they're probably not going to be used to drafting so that's going to come into it how comfortable they are to draft and we see in in the women's squad I think Nicola Spirig isn't even using a TT bike because she doesn't feel so comfortable drafting close to the wheel on a TT bike. She's actually going to use a road bike. Is that clever? I don't know. She doesn't really need to be that aero. She just needs to sit on the wheel for 180k. But the bike tech and the optimization strategy will go into that at a later date. But I'm just going to give you a quick run through the teams, the pacemakers, just for the bike leg only so you can get a quick overview. This event is on tomorrow morning, very early. It's going to be seriously cool. It's going to be seriously fast. They're on Lausitz Ring in Germany, which is basically a six kilometer smooth as hell tarmac oval. The air density is looking pretty low, the temperatures are quite warm and there's very little wind. So you're gonna see some serious fast paced action. You've got um, Dan Bigham in there, you've got Alex Dowsett, obviously world tour rider. And you've got some seriously, seriously fast athletes spread across both teams. So the dynamics of it are gonna be quite interesting to see. So without talking too much about the tech, let's just have a look at the course. So we're on Lausix Ring in Germany. They come out of the lake and it's about a 10 mile TT you know, the, the route is a little bit winding towards the ring. When they get to the ring, it's just lap after lap after lap. And how are the teams gonna do it? Are they gonna burn riders at the start? Are they gonna try and keep eight riders all pretty much till the end? Um, we see on both teams, we have some real short distance riders, some track cyclists and track specialists who are really good at like 4K pursuit races. We've got some very, very specialist long distance uh, time trial specialists from the UK that are used to doing 100 mile TTs on their own. So the mix of the teams is really interesting. So that's the course. Um, I think the guys, the Joe Skipper team, are aiming to do about 3 hours 20 for 180k, which I think is about 55k's an hour. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's going to be the longest, fastest team time trial ever. Let's just have a look at some of the pacemakers, so basically the, the squads that are going to help the Ironmen through their, their bike legs, male and female. Um, now, I think the Joe Skipper team, uh, for the bike leg is going to hands down beat the Blumenfeld team. I'm not saying those athletes aren't strong, the pacemakers for the Blumenfeld team. I just think the kind of holistic approach that Dan Bigham has brought to the team in terms of aerodynamic strategy and optimization, I don't believe the other team has that. So let's just look at a couple of the big names I've pulled out of the pacemakers, um, starting with pretty much the grandfather or the godfather of TTs in the UK at the moment, Matt Bottrill. He's basically the, the brains behind Drag to Zero. He's optimized loads of athletes. He sorted out Tim Don as a triathlete. Um, and he's a bit of the godfather of aerodynamics for sort of amateur TT races in the UK. He's not a spring chicken, he won't mind me saying that. Um, and, he's a pacemaker, pay, and he's a pacemaker for Christian Blumenfeld. He's got 60 odd combined national titles in the UK. He's a domestic god basically when it comes to TT. Not got the highest power, not got the lowest CDA, but in terms of knowledge and experience, one to have on your team. Um, now, this is the real hitter, for, I think, for the Blumenfeld team. This is Phil Williams. He's an absolute unit. Um, probably one of the best TTs in the UK. He's current national 25-mile champion, I think. Yeah, I mean, in terms of a, a TT specialist, he's someone you really want on your team. But are ITT specialists naturally very good at riding team time trials? So I think, you know, maybe his double on um, Joe Skipper's side would be someone like Alex Pritchard. Now, you've probably never heard of him if you're, you know, you follow kind of world tour racing, but in the domestic scene in the UK, he's one of the best time trialers out there. He's one of the best road racers as well at the moment, and he's, he's a young guy, um, but he's huge. 
he's really, really big in stature. You might think, oh, that's fine. He can, you know, sit behind Alex Dowsett in the TT train. Well, if you think about the World Tour, rider like Alex Dowsett, he's quite a big guy because Alex Dowsett is also on the Joe Skipper team along with Dan Bigham. You might think he's quite a big guy. Well, yeah, he is compared to the World Tour where the Pro Peloton is basically like a gang of skinny teenagers. But Alex Dowsett is a lot shorter or a lot smaller um, than someone like Alex Pritchard. So obviously this guy, he's a big guy. He's got some seriously impressive wins in the UK. Um, he's a fast time trialist, you know, in his own right. So obviously got a huge engine and a huge power output when he comes to the front. But I can tell you from experience, being the biggest guy in a team time trial is not a nice place to be. Now, if you're a big guy and you rock up to a team time trial, people think, oh, that's fine. You've got loads of power. You can carry the team through this and you're going to be the hero. Actually, if you're tall and you're bigger than everyone else, it's it's probably the worst scenario you can be in because everyone, go, everyone goes into the same kind of red zone when they're on the front of a Team TT, right? So the rate of perceived exertion will probably be the same for every rider. They know what power they're going to. And yes, a big rider might notch it up by half a kilometre an hour or one kilometre an hour and a smaller rider might, you know, be in the same kind of perceived exertion range but, and might be slightly slower. But that short rider, when he goes to the back of the train, he's going to recover all of those matches that he's burned very, very quickly because of the draft being so huge. If you're tall, but you really don't have an opportunity to draft very well and recharge those batteries when you're at the back, and maybe when you get to the front again, you're only kind of six out of 10 recharged, whereas a much smaller rider, a much lower CDA, has a much higher chance of recovery. So if you're tall, yes, you have a higher power output and you do you know, gain the team time, but you really, it's really hard for you to recover. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets burnt quite quickly, not saying anything bad about him, but he is gonna be penalized for being the tallest rider in the squad. So I mentioned I thought that, you know, the Joe Skipper squad was stronger than the Christian Blumenfeld squad, but then, you know, you get to people like Chris Fennell, another domestic, like, TT god, basically, in the UK. He's got so many wins to his name. Um, 2021 UK National 100-mile TT champion. So he knows how to ride 160 kilometres really fast in an aero position. So is that kind of experience going to help? And then you come to the bigger names. Like, this is probably the biggest name you've heard of on the team for Joe Skipper. It's Alex Dowsett. Um, and when you think about, you know, his interest in aerodynamics and the experience he's got from the World Tour, then could be seriously beneficial. And he knows how to ride in a, in a very, very fast pace line, a couple of inches off the wheel, which some of the athletes might not be so comfortable doing if they're experts in just ITT. Now, another reason why I'm backing the Joe Skipper team is a very strong uh, pursuit athlete and all round time trial god, um, John Archibald. Some say he actually came out of the womb in that position wearing a POC helmet. Um, he knows how to ride in a pace line, a team time trial. I think he got fourth at the World TTT Championships. Um, he, he currently rides for Iolo Cometa. I think he actually deserves a much better pro contract just for his kind of TT and pursuit prowess alone. But yeah, he'll be comfortable over any sort of distance and massive engine and also, yeah, super aero. Then you've got the Tamfield brothers. Um, they've both had World Tour experience. They're now riding for Ribble Well Tight. Um, concentrating a lot more on the road I think but you know that pursuit and TC prowess is absolutely proven. Now on the women's side at first I thought it was a, it was pretty even the bike leg stuff but actually when you pick out the strong riders for all, all the pacemakers on the women's side this becomes a trend here look Emily Meakin pacemaker for Cat Matthews, Leah Dixon pacemaker for Cat Matthews, Jennifer George TC specialist pacemaker for Cat Matthews and yeah, like again, Kelly Murphy, TT specialist. When you pick out the actual TT specialists out, the women pacemakers, it really is Katrina Matthews, which is the stronger prospect. Now, you might say that she's the, the kind of underdog for the whole event because she's not an experienced Ironman as, as Nicholas Spirig is, but I'm going on the bike legs. And I think, you know, the bike leg being the longest part of the event, if you've got these TT specialists where you can sit behind and hold a much higher average speed, I think, you know, the Cat Matthews bike leg is going to smash it. Caveat to that, someone like Joanna Patterson riding for Nicholas Birig, pretty much the modern day Beryl Burton. Um, absolutely insane numbers when you consider um, what a TT specialist she is. Um, and she's pretty much an amazing all-round athlete. So one to watch there. She'll probably be doing a lot of the time on the front. Um, and then you've got someone like Lucy Buckingham. It's probably one of the most experienced kind of well-rounded athletes that we've, we've had in Britain. Um, you know, she's got Olympic experience. She's not a TT specialist per se, but knows how to organize herself. And now really interestingly, uh, Nicola Spirig, I think, won't even be riding a TT bike on the back of her train, which you think would be crazy. But 
you know, if you think about it, that's her choice because she thinks she can get closer to the wheel in front and she's going to be more comfortable getting closer to the wheel in front on a road bike. Now, considering she'll probably never do a single turn on the front, that might be a wise decision. Or does she actually need to lower her own CDA? If the airspeed is so high, she needs to, you know, actually lower her CDA anyway to save watts, even when she's in the wheels, then she's going to be using a lot more watts just to hold the wheel if she is on a road bike. But a really interesting decision there because Cat Matthews will be on a fully fledged BMC uh, TT bike. But tech wise, we'll come on to all that stuff in a later video when we get Dan Bigham on the channel and look really deep into the, the tech stuff about you know, Dan's bike and the team's bikes and the optimization and even the tuna tail vortex separator that I spotted. And we'll try and quiz Dan on that. But cheers, tune in tomorrow and I'll see you in the next one.